Hi, Greg Prochelle here at Ferris Restaurant in the Maid Hotel. Today we're going to be demoing the Okinawa sweet potato dish, which is kind of a play on a loaded baked potato. Um, but as you see it come together, you'll realize that it's really not. But um, pretty easy dish. We start with some beautiful Okinawa sweet potatoes. All we do is we steam them. We steam them for about, I would say, a good 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer depending on the size of the potato and depending on what you want on it. We steam it till it's basically fallen apart, but still firm enough to where you can actually grab it and hold on to it. Um, right now I'm putting a, a very large amount of butter into the saute pan. Um, we use cast iron pans just because it gives us that nice crust. We almost treat this sweet potato like a steak. Um, it's a lot of butter. I wait till the butter is uh, basically foaming just a little bit. There's still some raw butter in there. All we're trying to do is just bring these potatoes back to temperature because what I did, as I mentioned, is I steamed them and then we cooled them. After we cool them, once they're a little bit firmer, we're able to break them into pieces and you definitely want to keep the skin on them. The skin is what's going to get crunchy. The skin is what's going to give you that texture that we always strive after in our kitchen is all of our food is very textural. Uh, the main difference between sweet potatoes and regular potatoes are these ones tend to be a little creamier. Um, whereas, and also they always, to me, they seem always juicier. That's why I really like the dish is because they really have just a certain succulence to them that only you can get from regular potatoes. And especially the Japanese varieties like the Okinawa sweet potatoes or like the Satsuma emu potatoes, they are a flavor that I think is like anything else. We just like the purple ones because I think they're a beautiful color. And I think the dish together is also just a really beautiful thing. And when you are starting with a great produce, all you're doing is just basically manipulating it lightly to make it uh, a little bit better for what you want it to use. Uh, this dish could easily be done with regular potatoes. It could be. Will it be as good? I don't know. I, I, I personally don't think so. Um, like I said, you could use regular sweet potatoes. If you can't find either Satsuma Imus or you can't find Okinawa sweet potatoes or any other sweet potato, a red sweet potato will still be delicious. And all I'm doing right now is just trying to get a little crust on it, just trying to get some warmth back into it. And like I said, we, we kind of treat these like a steak. Like we're going to start basting them in a little bit. Basting is going to help cook them from all angles as, it, as it's getting in. It's also going to try to try to trap in some of that moisture to keep it nice and succulent. Um, I would say you want to go maybe five to eight minutes. And a nice trick you can do is also you can get the butter going. And right when I put the potatoes in, you can just take this whole thing and throw it in an oven. Let it hang out in there for about five minutes. And that's really it. The, the one thing you need to make sure is as I'm doing this, the butter is still not really browning. It's still foaming a little bit. It's under a low heat. You want a low steady heat because you don't want it to burn. Because when the potatoes burn, they become very bitter, like very, very bitter. Um, and one thing you can always do, this is probably the best, best piece of equipment in the kitchen. This is just a cake tester. Um, it's used by every savory cook in the entire world, generally not to test cake whatsoever, but all I'm doing is also I'm just poking. I'm feeling for resistance. Um, if you really want, you can just take it, poke it in, end up feeling it. If it feels warm all the way through, you're good to go. And like I said, these potatoes are already completely cooked. They don't need to be piping hot. They really don't. Um, all they need to do is have that nice crust that we're looking for, and that's really it. They can be served room temperature. This dish would be delicious if it was cold. So now I'm starting, to, you can start to see a little bit over on the side, they're starting to get a little bit brown. I'm feeling them, they're getting a little crunchy and that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so we're ready to go. So I'm gonna shut this heat off. And you're gonna see they're all nice and crunchy and like we back up all that crunch with a lot of other aspects. Right when it comes off the heat, one of the most important things is obviously we're gonna hit it with some crunchy salt. I also hit it with a lot of lemon. It's surprisingly a lot of lemon. The citrus, the brightness really kind of combats the creaminess in a really, really lovely way. Potatoes are ready. These are going to stay warm for a good amount of time. I would say probably about 10 minutes. Here we have a pumpkin mustard. I love mustard with potatoes. It doesn't really seem to make much sense. And I also love pumpkin seeds. So we, so we basically take a Dijon, we take some pumpkin seeds that we grind up. Uh, we infuse the uh, mustard with some pumpkin seeds. There's also some really nice sherry vinegar and some Austrian uh, pumpkin oil. Uh, it's a really viscous, really flavorful oil. But if you could find some Austrian pumpkin oil, you can see it, at, you can find it at most grocery stores. You could easily use it. I would just take a little bit, mix it in with some Dijon, some sherry vinegar. And if you have pepitas or toasted pumpkin seeds, you could throw them in, just basically quickly hash them um, with your knife, just chop them up really finely and fold it in and really kind of play with it. Do whatever you want with it. So from here, uh, we're just gonna take some of our sweet potato, just gonna put them on the bottom of the bowl. And that kind of the idea with the uh, mustard on the bottom is that we want you to basically grab a potato and as you're pulling it up, you're gonna pull it up through that mustard. So I'm pretty, pretty much addicted to 
apples just in general. These are just regular Granny Smith apples. We really like the acidity and we like the texture that they give them. And the sourness, that tartness from a Granny Smith apple really, really, really kind of cuts through all that fat that we want. After this, we use buttermilk. The buttermilk adds a depth of creaminess. You could kind of start seeing the baked potato aspect right now. Uh, instead of sour cream, we want to use something that's a little more acidic. Um, we infuse ours, we, hit, we whisk in some olive oil, some salt, some pepper. Nothing crazy, just basically bulking up that flavor, making it a little more flavorful. We're gonna throw an ingredient um, that you can find in most spice stores. It's called black lime. It's basically a lime that has been brined or been boiled in a brine and then left out in the sun. If you can't find black lime, um, a great alternative would be just some simple lime zest. We use a lot of herbs here. We like, we like greens. We like to try to have everything be very health, healthy and just beautiful. Um, this is a Shingiku edible chrysanthemum. Um, if you can't find these, I would say some parsley. Some parsley, some chives would work great. Those would be easily, easily usable. Like I said, you're just trying to get the green flavor out of it. Um, and we basically like to sprinkle it over the whole thing. You can get a bite right now without getting all the ingredients that we want. Um, the way I cook and the way I like to eat is when I see a dish, I immediately look for the perfect bite and I try to do that on a large scale when you're doing a dish like this size and that's sometimes hard, but basically we kind of design this plate in a way that you eat it, where if you're able to take any bite, you're gonna get all those ingredients. Last but not least, my one of my uh, also favorite things to do, such zested citrus. We use a lot of citrus here. Something about orange, orange and buttermilk and the potato. It's really quite lovely. It brings it together nicely. It adds that really nice little sweetness to back up all those flavors. And at the same time, it adds that light hint of acidity. So here you have our finished dish. This is our Okinawa sweet potato. Um, hopefully now you can make a version of this at home and probably improve on it in your own, own likes, or you can come into Ferris and have the one that I make for you.